Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office continues to search for two men they believe were involved in the shooting of a Balcones Heights police officer. Some glimmers of hope in the fight against the coronavirus. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on a possible new vaccine and some declining COVID numbers coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little humid start to your day. And uh, yeah, only 57 degrees and it's going to get warmer. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, February 4th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, no jacket required, like you say sometimes. That's <laughs> Not right. Today. Oh, it's very, very mild, very, very muggy this morning, and it sounds like we're setting the stage for quite a warm day again. Oh, it's going to be really, really warm. Got mid 70s yesterday as expected, and uh, today we're looking at 80. Records 85, so it's going to be close to it, but we got to put up, a, you know, very, very foggy in places too. So that's the other thing we're having to deal with this morning. And as you can see, it looks a little bit um, kind of murky. This is uh, I 10 410 looking off toward the northwest and further out to the west, Castroville. You are at pea soup right now. Zero visibility. Stinson has dropped down to a half mile. Pleasanton has a good deal of fog and then some around Hondo. So, of course, this is going to thicken up in the next couple of hours, kind of go back and forth with visibilities, but it's kind of just centered on our viewing area as of right now. Temperatures, everybody's in the uh, 50s and low 60s around here. And yeah, you got all this humidity as expected. Now we do have a front. Humidity is going to be sticking around throughout a good chunk of the day. Then we have a front moving through later on this evening. We'll hit 80 prior to that. That's going to get rid of the front's going to get rid of the humidity and also bring in basically normal temperatures tomorrow. A lot of allergens. Nothing is too awfully high, but we've got some ash and elm starting to show up as well. So some folks are starting to suffer from all the, uh, the pollen out there and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are basically going to be staying steady with all this humidity and all the cloud cover mostly cloudy with some of that patchy fog so watch out for that and where there's fog there may be a little bit of kind of mist on the roads and then later on this afternoon mostly sunny skies some clouds thrown in yeah, 80 for a high temperature. It's going to be staying well either at or above normal for the next couple of days but next week just wait till uh, details on that. That's all coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King. All right, got some fog out there. Anything, uh, any problems from it? Well, uh, Mike, good morning. And right now you can see this is what we call our road weather tool, and it shows you what sort of conditions you might face on the roads. And as you're mentioning, especially in Castroville and Hondo, where the fog uh, is uh, really showing up on this map, and we expect that to probably continue to come into Bear County throughout the morning. Have a couple of incidents. First, we'll start here with this stalled vehicle. Uh, this is at uh, I-10 uh, westbound at Crossroads Boulevard. It's on the shoulder, uh, but traffic still flowing well at this hour. Not much traffic on the roads, of course. I have a crash here reported at 37 at uh, Pecan Valley Drive on the uh, south side there, so we'll check on that, see how uh, things are evolving with with that as well. Bandera Road, a little bit of a delay this morning, 12 minutes uh, between 410 and 1604. And here's a look at Transguide. You already see the low crowds. That's 35 at Walsham, 410 at Perrin Vital. So uh, watch out for the fog this morning and uh, take some uh, extra time if you're traveling. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. The search continues this morning for two men responsible for shooting a Balcones Heights police officer. According to Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, one of the men opened fire on Sergeant Joey Sepulveda and Officer Edgar Ortiz. It all started in the 6900 block of Interstate 10 around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. The two officers were working a case looking into suspicious people who were reported to be burglarizing vehicles in the parking lot of the Seoul Apartments. Sepulveda was shot in the neck and shoulder and underwent surgery at Brook Army Medical Center. Ortiz was not wounded. The sheriff says a suspected shooter who was a rear passenger is a 27 year old man. He is 5 foot 11 inches tall and weighs 150 pounds. He has short black dreadlocks and brown eyes. Now the other suspect is believed to be the driver of a Ford pickup. Though Salazar could not release their names, the sheriff had some strong words for them and talked about the officer's body cam video. They are among the most cowardly people that I've ever had the displeasure of dealing with uh, in this in my 28 year career. It's a heart wrenching video to see. They gunned down this this officer in, in very much in cold blood. The 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 backseat shooter looked him right in the eye and then shot him point blank um, in the upper upper body. 
Salazar said the suspect shot at Sepulveda up to eight more times as he was running for cover. If you have seen these men or know any information on the case, you're asked to call the sheriff's office at 210-335-6000. San Antonio police say one man is dead after a shooting on the east side. This happened last night in a house in the 4300 block of Skelton Drive. Investigators found a 52-year-old man with three gunshot wounds to the torso in a front yard. Police say the man did not live at that home, but was in his car outside one of those homes. Investigators say they believe a suspect or group of suspects walked up to the man and shot him. Police do not have a suspect vehicle information and at this time have only vague descriptions of the suspect's clothing. Another potential vaccine breakthrough as the coronavirus pandemic rages on across the country. A new study has found not only could the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine protect against the virus, but it could reduce transmission. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. For the first time in the coronavirus pandemic, the number of Americans receiving a first dose of COVID vaccine is now greater than the number of reported COVID cases in the U.S., but vaccine demand still outpacing supply. It's heartbreaking when people want the vaccine and are unable to get it. But this morning, promising news of another vaccine on the way. Clinical trials in the UK suggesting a single dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is up to 76% effective for up to three months and could even keep people from spreading the virus. The US still waiting to review the data. If that's true, that's good news, but I'd like to see the data myself. The news comes as the U.S. continues to see some glimmers of hope in the fight against the virus. Nationwide, seven-day averages of hospitalizations and deaths are declining. The COVID tracking project calling the data hopeful and devastating, saying states are still reporting an average of 3,000 people dying every day. On the front lines, nurse Jerusha Robinson tearing up recalling the hard conversations happening in ICUs. Am I going to die? Am I going to make it out of here? Am I going to get to see my family again? Um, and you have to tell them that we're fighting as hard as we can and we're doing what we can and they're fighting as hard as they can, but the chances are low. Health officials still worried new variants spreading across the country could reverse any progress made in the last few weeks. I'm not an alarmist, but this is as scared as I have been since the beginning of the pandemic. And as we head into the Super Bowl weekend, the CDC is warning Americans to avoid large gatherings. Dr. Anthony Fauci adding, quote, lay low and cool it. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And for now, let's take a look at where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. The seven day average has dropped to 1,463 cases every 24 hours. Another 14 deaths were also reported. We are seeing another drop in our hospitals. 1,127 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 394 are in the intensive care unit and 236 are still on ventilators. Just now about 438, we're running about 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, a popular country music star is in some trouble over something he did on video. And the San Antonio Spurs get a huge win against the Timberwolves. It was a close one. Well, highlights coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam. Boy, it's humid out there and a little foggy, so be careful on the roadways. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 440. Today, President Joe Biden is expected to announce his intention to raise the number of refugees admitted into the U.S. A source says Biden will make the announcement during a visit to the State Department. The Trump administration set a refugee cap of 15,000 for the current fiscal year. That is the lowest since 1980. President Biden has pledged to set an annual admissions cap of 125,000. But according to one of the sources, the plan is to wait until October when the next fiscal year begins to set that cap. The increase builds on a series of executive actions from Biden aimed at setting a new course for U.S. immigration policy. The U.S. Secretary of Defense ordering a staggered pause of operations across the military so that commanders can review the handling of extremism in the armed forces. The pause, known as a stand down, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says commanders need to have discussions with service members over the next 60 days. Concerns about extremism in the military have spiked following the January, January 6th U.S. Capitol riot. Authorities have charged at least 22 people in connection with the riot who are either formerly or currently associated with the U.S. military. 
Some members of Congress are calling for an investigation into New York's pandemic response at nursing homes. Seven Republican lawmakers from the state of New York have sent a letter to the acting attorney general asking the Justice Department to issue subpoenas to New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. Letter cites the New York Attorney General's report from last week that said the New York State Department of Health undercounted COVID-19 deaths among nursing home residents by approximately 50 percent. New York State Health Commissioner has denied there was an undercount. San Antonio Spurs head coach Greg Popovich has spent 25 years preaching the Spurs need a solid 48 minute effort if they want a chance at winning. Well, 12 minutes was all it took to pull out a win over the Minnesota Timberwolves last night. DeMar DeRozan scored 30 points and San Antonio rallied from a 16 point deficit to beat Minnesota 111-108. Yaka Pirtle added 19 points. DeJounte Murray had 15 points and 11 rebounds. This is the first time the Spurs won while trailing by 15 or more points at any time in the game. San Antonio trailed until the final four minutes, closing the game on a 30-11 run. DeRozan fueled the run when he was fouled on a powerful one-handed dunk. Ertl and DeRozan combined to score the remaining Spurs points to seal the win. Wait to go guys up next Spurs play their first road game since January 20th when they face Houston on Saturday night tip off is set for 7 p.m. over at the Toyota Center. It's good to have a win. Nice to report on a solid win. Yes we'll take it. Go Spurs go. Time now is 443 and 57 degrees for now. Up next more details on why a popular country music star is apologizing over something he did on a video. A country music star is facing backlash after he was seen using a racial slur on video. ABC's Steve Asunami has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, removed from the radio. Does it ever make you sad? No. That was seven songs ago. Country singer Morgan Wallen, the breakout sensation behind Seven Summers. than my hometown. He was caught on tape using a racial slur and is apologizing, saying, I'm embarrassed and sorry. I used an unacceptable and inappropriate racial slur that I wish I could take back. There are no excuses to use this type of language ever. I want to sincerely apologize for using the word. I promise to do better. He's a superstar. He's had years of media training and he doesn't get a pass on that anymore. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what Wallen's fellow country music stars are saying and take a closer look at how the business side of the industry is reacting. With your GMA First Look, I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Atlanta. Many of us are ready to watch the Super Bowl this weekend, but is your TV ready to go? So on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shows us some simple TV tweaks that will help you get the best view. To help you kick off your game day viewing, Consumer Reports has some pre-game tips. First, sack the preset mode. It may sound odd, but don't use the sports mode for watching sports. It could artificially boost the color, contrast, and brightness too much. Tech editor Jim Wilcox says the presets that look best for sports include natural, cinema, and movie mode. Of course, you can adjust your settings individually. To change the brightness or black level, he says find a nighttime scene from a show and start tweaking. Basically, you're trying to turn up the brightness or black levels as high as you can, and that'll show you all the details in the image. But then you want to turn it down so that the black areas look as dark as they can while still preserving some of the detail. Then there's the contrast or white level. That affects how bright the field will look. To adjust, find an image with a lot of white. Lower the contrast so you can see all the detail. Then raise it so that you can get the picture looking as bright as you can without losing those details. Next, adjust the color temperature so your team's jerseys are the right shade. Choose the warm or low setting so the white yard lines don't look so blue. Then adjust the tint so the player's skin tones look natural. And finally, enjoy the game. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I like many people have jacked with all those settings and I usually am not happy with it. Why not going back to the factory settings? <laughs> to what they were before. Yeah, just doing the reset. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think that would that would be me as well. Mm -hmm. Like, don't mess with it. Don't Samuel, what's it. your experience uh, adjusting all that stuff on well, your mm -hmm. big flat screen or <laughs> flat screens in your apartment? Well, the, the big problem I have is the sometimes I will automatically set the SAP. Which, which is fine for a while, but right. you know, <laughs> when I'm trying to, to work on your Spanish, <laughs> right? <laughs> when I'm trying to work on it, but at some point, like you call them, and they're like, uh, 
you probably hit a button and sure enough, like you yeah. sat on the remote or something. That's true. It happens. <laughs> But uh, looking at traffic, things uh, mostly looking fine, but again, want to show our, our road conditions tool, a road weather tool, if you will, uh, so you can see some of the uh, fog uh, there near Hondo, Castroville, and down to the south in Pleasanton. So if you're coming in from 35 from the south, 90 from the west, and 37, uh, it's something to look out for, and we expect that to continue to expand across Bear County. Still have a report of this uh, stalled vehicle here. This is at I-10 at uh, Crossroads. You can see a little bit of a delay now coming uh, into that area. So let's take a look here at the travel time from Bernie. Still looks good, 25 minutes uh, eastbound heading into downtown. And once you're inside 1604, uh, 13 minutes uh, heading into downtown, 12 minutes uh, heading uh, to the, the other way out towards 1604. So still looking good. And we mentioned 90 with some fog out in Castroville. The travel time still looking good though. 11 minutes once you get inside 1604. And here's a look at Transguide 410 at uh, Perrin Vital. Uh, that looks uh, okay. And 1604 at Bandera as well. But again, uh, fog probably continuing to build in the area. So uh, take it slow. And that's the, the big uh, tip there. And then uh, do not use your high beams if you're in uh, high fog areas, guys. I, I didn't see any on 281. You see any coming in? I, I didn't see anything coming in, but I'm looking more on the cameras here. Hi, right, Mike. You see anything in your three block commute this morning? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing you have to watch out for, though, uh, like Sam was talking about, not only the fog, but mist on the roads, too. Beautiful picture from yesterday and love the caption. Yes, we now know where cotton candy comes from. Those nice little cotton candy clouds out there looking past the Tower of the Americas. And uh, this view is not a whole lot of cotton candy, but... Uh, you can see it's just kind of kind of fuzzy looking, kind of hazy looking, and there is plenty of fog around cat, although it has improved just at the top of uh, the newscast. It was zero visibility now up to a mile and a half. Stinson is also improved and uh, slightly better down around Pleasanton, but we're just going to have to be on the lookout for this over the next couple of hours. And of course, the uh, humidity remains very, very high this morning, and that's going to be the case throughout most of the day. But here comes the front and it's going to be uh, wind shift late afternoon, dinner time or so. Wind's going to shift around out of the north primarily. It's going to be breezy overnight tonight and starting off the day tomorrow. And that pulls in all that drier air. So that gets rid of, obviously, the humidity. It's also going to be slightly cooler. The drier air is going to allow temperatures to, uh, to drop down somewhat. And then we stay right around normal tomorrow instead of the 80s today. And we're actually going to be seeing some mid to upper 80s, especially down to the uh, southwest later on today. So humidity remains low through tomorrow. And starting off on Saturday, and we will have another little bit of a front trying to move through here then on Saturday, just kind of a, a, a minor one, if you will. So we do still have some of these low clouds hanging around here and around the country. The front is going to be driven through with by this storm up here to the north of us. It will not do anything as far as any precipitation, unfortunately, but it is going to at least get rid of the heat because, yes, it is very warm. We're almost at our uh, normal temperature right now normal high temperature right now. What's going to be going on next week? There's a mass of cold air up there in Canada. We stay pretty mild through the weekend, but we have a front moving through early in the week uh, about Monday, Tuesday, and that's going to pull down much, much colder temperatures. And that cold air is going to be invading by the latter half of next week, probably sticking around even into next weekend. Today, anything but February weather 72 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies. Still keep a lot of clouds around this morning and then more sunshine later on today. 80 for high temperature here in town and the records 85. And then tomorrow, well, back to reality, mid 60s. Weekend is going to be mild, a couple of extra clouds on Sunday, cool temperatures in the morning. Monday is still going to be warm and then that front and the timing of it's still a little bit iffy as of right now. I'm kind of going with it coming in on Tuesday and uh, temperatures only in the uh, mid 40s. It looks like by the middle of next week. And like I said, it looks like it's going to be sticking around through uh, next weekend, too. All right. Thank wow. you, Mike. 453, 57 degrees. And coming up, the Golden Globe nominees are out. We're going to tell you which of your favorite shows made the list. Netflix is celebrating after a slew of its shows were nominated for Golden Globes. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Netflix, the clear winner at the Golden Globe nominations. That's the real magic of the movies. The streaming services Citizen Kane film Mank, the top nominee. And Netflix's royal drama The Crown, the top TV nominee, a leading 42 nominations in all, around a third of all nods, showing just how much our viewing habits have changed. 
also winners, women directors. For the first time ever, there were more women nominated than men in the directing categories. Regina King for One Night in Miami, Chloe Zhao for Nomadland, and Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman. I'm a nice guy. Are you? More award nominations this morning from the Screen Actors Guild. The Golden Globes air live February 28th. Country Music's current top-selling and streaming artist Morgan Wallen dropped like a hot stone after TMZ posted a video of Wallen using the N-word. He apologized, said he's embarrassed, and he promises to do better. But country radio and streaming platforms have pulled his songs, and his label has suspended him. Meanwhile, a progressive first in the country music world, Brothers Osborne singer TJ Osborne revealing that he's gay, making him the first openly gay artist on a major country label. He came out in an interview with Time Magazine. And happy birthday to the godfather of shock rock, Alice Cooper is 73, while actor and comedian Hannibal Burris is 38. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. He is a funny guy. 458, 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Republican Party continues to try to figure out its leadership as two key lawmakers cause conflict within the party. Plus, Instagram confirms it's working on a vertical stories feed. We'll tell you more about what this feature is coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A drive-by shooting here in San Antonio ends with a man dead overnight. We'll have more details. Plus, House Republicans vote to keep Representative Liz Cheney in GOP leadership despite her vote to impeach former President Donald Trump last month. Well, you would never know it is early February in South Texas, but the forecast tends to be all over the place this time of year. This morning, waking up to very muggy and somewhat foggy conditions. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, February 4th, and it doesn't feel like February. It's a little humid out there. Not even close. And I see Mike Ostrage kind of formulating his thoughts over there, trying to see how he's going to pitch this. Warm and humid and foggy. Okay. You guys summed it up. We got so, it. We got yeah, it. temperatures are, uh, you know, almost close to what the normal high is, which is 65 degrees. We're at 60 right now and all that humidity. That's going to be changing, though, later on today. We do have a um, pretty good front moving on through here. Not, though, before we hit the upper 70s and low 80s around the area. We'll be topping off at 80 degrees later on this afternoon. The aquifer on uh, yesterday's reading did drop down one-tenth of a foot, and the allergens, not individually, not a lot, but there's a whole slew of them out there. And I know with all those extra ash and elm in the atmosphere, a lot of folks have been uh, kind of getting some snuffles and sneezes and everything from that. Visibility, uh, well, it has actually improved su substantially in the past, uh, well, half an hour. Half an hour ago, it was down to zero at Castorville, now five miles. Three quarters of miles, still a lot of fog down around Pleasanton. Stinson was down to just about a half mile, and now it's back up to 10 miles. However, that doesn't mean we're done with it. It's still going to be sticking around uh, throughout the morning. And uh, clouds, fog starting off, then more sunshine later on this afternoon. We get up to 80 today. The record's 85. We're not going to be hitting the record, but obviously it's going to be close to it. Then that front comes on through here. It's going to be windy tonight as well as starting off the day tomorrow. We'll have uh, clouds starting off and then more sunshine and back to normal temperatures right around mid 60s for a high tomorrow. The weekend is going to be mild and nice. You know, a few extra clouds here and there. Temperatures actually a little bit above normal. That's how we're going to be starting off next week. We may actually warm up a little bit starting off next week, but then pretty big cold front is going to be moving through here midweek and sticking around. So we're going to go from one extreme today to another one about this time next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. What's going on? So oh, I see a, a dot right in the middle there. Yeah, we have a, a couple of incidents here. Just wanted to point out, Mike, that, as you were mentioning, sort of the fog getting a little better out west. You can see our Castroville now not showing up on our, our road conditions tool, but Pleasanton still a bunch of fog down there. So if you're coming in from that area this morning, plan for some extra time. I have a newly reported crash here. This is a 410 uh, westbound. You can start to see a little bit of a delay uh, there. So let's look at the travel uh, time there on the south side on 410. So if you're heading uh, westbound, eight minutes between 37 and Palo Alto Road, seven minutes uh, going the other way. So that's something to uh, watch out for this morning. And looking at some travel times in the region, we mentioned the fog in the Pleasanton area, 28 minutes still coming in downtown San Antonio. So that's still a fair Really good time. 19 minutes on 20 from Castroville, 26 minutes on 35 coming in from New Braunfels. And here's a look at Transguide at 35 at Cesar Chavez, uh, 10 at 410 East, uh, looking fine, but traffic starting to build a little bit this morning, guys.
Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police say a man is dead following a drive by shooting on the city's far west side. Happened just after 10 o'clock last night in the 9100 block of Roquefort Drive, just east of 1604. SAPD says the victim, a man in his 20s, was pronounced dead at the scene after he was shot in the head. Police say they tracked down a vehicle and have a possible suspect in custody. Also new this morning, firefighters were forced to fight flames at an abandoned house just east of the downtown area. It happened just after 1 a.m. in the 600 block of Iowa Street. That's near South Hackberry. Fire crews on the scene say they got the fire knocked down quickly, but the damage was extensive. They, so, they say there were no signs of anyone inside the house and no utilities were hooked up. Investigators are now looking into what may have caused that fire. 505 now to Capitol Hill, where the House is taking a crucial vote today. Lawmakers will decide whether to take action against Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene for supporting conspiracy theories. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Overnight, Republicans on Capitol Hill meeting privately to air out their differences. And we're very candid and honest with each other. It comes as Democrats plan to vote in just hours to strip Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of her committee assignments. The freshman lawmaker has been under fire for making outlandish and false statements claiming that school shootings were staged and questioning the 9-11 attacks. It's odd there's never any evidence shown for a plane in the Pentagon. Republican leaders say Green apologized last night for those comments. But Green has not publicly apologized, saying this on Tuesday. I have said things I shouldn't say at some time or another, but I don't think I have anything to apologize for. Democrats announced today's vote after House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy decided not to remove Green from the House Education and Labor and Budget Committees. If we are now going to start judging what other members have said before they're even members of Congress, I think it's going to be a hard time for the Democrats to place anybody on committee. McCarthy accusing Democrats of a double standard, mentioning Democrat Ilhan Omar, who's been under scrutiny for remarks critical of Israel, and Steve King, the former Republican congressman who was removed from his committees in 2019 after racist remarks. Congresswoman Liz Cheney will keep her leadership role within the Republican Party. Cheney has been under pressure from Trump loyalists after voting to impeach the former president. A majority of Republicans in the House voted last night in favor of keeping Cheney in power. But exactly who backed Cheney isn't known because the vote was by secret ballot. It was a very resounding acknowledgement that we uh, need to go forward together. And back to today's vote on Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Democrats have the majority in the House, so if all of them vote against her, she will lose her committee assignments. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, there are no more appointments left for the two well-met clinics to get the coronavirus vaccine. Only those who have registered can get it at the Cisneros and Lopez Senior Centers. WellMed says the hotline will reopen once they receive more doses of that vaccine. Meanwhile, some San Antonio school districts have been forced to pivot quite a bit since the start of the pandemic, and now a staffing shortage is adding yet another challenge. If there was a need for substitutes before the public health crisis, Northeast ISD's executive director of communication says there's even more of a need now. She says they've even had to reduce qualifications for substitute teachers. So now we are allowing subs to come in that have 60 hours of college credit instead of having to have a degree. And at Northside ISD, reps say their challenge isn't necessarily finding substitutes, but finding those who are willing to work the length of a quarantine period. Well, it's nice to live in this mild climate during the winter. It also means road construction never really takes a break here. No, it doesn't. And that's the subject of this week's SAQ. Our traffic authority, Samuel King, joins us now. And Samuel, this is all about construction barriers, right? Yeah, this could be a source of anxiety for drivers, especially those concrete uh, barriers that we see in some big projects in the area. Pat asked us, why does TxDOT or road contractors have to put concrete barriers on the outside traffic, lane, traffic lanes? Uh, this creates more car damage anxiety while driving along those major roads. So we did reach out to TxDOT to get an answer for that. And a spokeswoman says the barriers are one of many tools to enhance safety for both drivers and construction crews. The type of barrier used on the traffic counts and it depends on what's uh, the traffic in the area and what the speed limit is. 2019, more than 26,000 crashes occurred in work zones in Texas, resulting in 167 fatalities and 690 serious injuries. So safety measures critically important, like slowing down 
not tailgating, just being aware. Now, if you have a question you'd like answered, head to our traffic page, ksat.com slash traffic, or you can find me and Samuel King on Facebook. Mark, Stephanie? Thank you, sir. 509, 58 degrees. And Apple is giving an update after some of its key services were unavailable due to an outage. And why do we celebrate Valentine's Day with the color red and hearts and chocolate? Well, the answers are coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, a humid start to your day. I have to admit, I did have my jacket when I walked outside this morning, but I quickly went back in, put it back on my couch because I also remembered Mike said it was going to be about 80 today. We'll be right back. Welcome back. 513, whether you love to celebrate Valentine's Day or you loathe it, it's coming <laughs> up soon. But why do we celebrate this day with the color red and hearts and chocolates? Our Sarah Costa explains some of the origins behind the date, February 14th. Valentine's Day, you know it's coming right after Christmas when the aisles at the stores instantly turn from green and red to red and pink with chocolates and hearts everywhere. But let's talk about where some of those traditions come from. Either you love Valentine's Day or just believe it's an overly commercialized holiday that just adds more pressure to your love life. Valentine's Day was started with the Catholic Church's Feast of St. Valentine on the day he was executed by the Roman Emperor in 270 AD, according to Reader's Digest. Many legends surround his death, like one that says he was a priest who married young couples after the emperor of that time outlawed marriage for young men so they would be better soldiers. Hence where the idea of celebrating love came from on the feast day. But where did the heart shape come from? Some believe it was inspired by a now extinct plant called Silphium from the African city state of Cyrene. The shapes of its leaves were heart shaped and the plant was used for food coloring, a cough syrup and an aphrodisiac. It's also been long believed that the color red is the color of passion. It makes you more attractive. Scientists at the University of Rochester even did a study that found people were more attracted to others who wore red. But where did the chocolates come from? Uh, well, apparently it just makes for good marketing. Richard Cadbury started designing ornate boxes for his chocolates to come in, including a heart-shaped one that may have changed the industry forever. And even though lovers get all the attention when it comes to Valentine's Day, everyone can celebrate without being involved romantically. According to Good Housekeeping, the most common recipients of Valentine's Day cards are actually teachers, most likely due to having several students in their classrooms. Back to you. That's I was, cute. I was just given a new red rect, uh, red tie with hearts on it as a gift, wink, wink, and I will wear it. <laughs> I'm planning on wearing it tomorrow. Oh, good. So we'll see what you guys think. That's a Not that's big a great... hearts, Mike, little, little hearts. It just looks like a nice, simple pattern. It's a great gift. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a fun holiday just, you know, to give our friends a little something. I got something from a little girl. Where I, I can wear oh, it several times. Yeah, I was going to say so he can wear it again. Wear it all next, all next week, week, every single day? No, people, people might say something. 515, 58 degrees. <laughs> and still ahead, an update on Apple's latest outage of some of its key services. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn. If you've been taking COPD sitting day. down, it's time to make a stand. Start a new day and with Trilogy. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems you're vision changes or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. In today's Tech Fights, Apple's outages. The company says some iCloud services have been running slow or have not been working at all. Some of the problems have been ironed out, but some users are still running into partial outages. 
If you're looking to get a COVID test, you could turn to Alexa to lead the way. The smart speaker will rattle off a list of all the nearby testing sites. Amazon will also help you locate the closest vaccine trial. Alexa will give you all the vaccine trials within 30 miles. Finally, Instagram confirms it is working on a vertical stories feature. Right now, users browse stories with taps and horizontal swipes. It's unclear if or when vertical feature will launch, but its development is seen as Instagram's attempt to better compete with TikTok. They could always bring back chronological order as well. That was a hit. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. <laughs> Swiping up. Uh, traffic looking okay at the moment, but we do have a couple of incidents. See a little bit of fog to the south and the west. We'll watch that continue to evolve. A uh, new crash being reported out here near the airport. This is a Loop 410 eastbound at jones Maltzberger Road. The good thing is traffic is relatively light at this hour. Looking at 410 on the north side, uh, eight minutes between 35 and I-10, nine minutes uh, going the other way, but we'll continue to uh, watch that. And we have uh, one more here between 281 and 35 four or five minutes. So that's looking pretty good there. And here's a look at Transguide 37 at Houston looking fine. I-10 at Callahan also looking fine this morning. Micah, how is the weather going to evolve for the rest of the day? Well, the rest of today, it's going to be gorgeous later on this afternoon and hot. We're still going to keep the fog around this morning as well as a lot of uh, some low clouds. And then later on this afternoon, may see some pictures like that. That will be just amazing. Thank you for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Not bad over there looking off to the northwest. I mean, a little fuzzy looking because of all the humidity and again, visibility where there was fog an hour ago, Casterville, Hondo, Stinson, there's hardly anything now. Still some around Pleasanton and uh, going down in southern Atascosa County. We'll still have to be on the lookout for this. Yesterday, we were about 10 degrees above normal, 10 above the previous day's reading, got up into the uh, mid and upper 70s. And then look at this today. We're going to be looking at some mid and even upper 80s, especially down to the uh, southwest in Rio Grande Valley here in town going for 80 for high temperature. The record is 85. I don't think we'll be hitting it, but it's definitely going to be on the hot side. Plus, throughout most of the day, we're still going to keep some of the humidity around here, but that will be changing. Now, dew point temperatures have gone up about, what, 15, 20, 25 degrees compared to this time yesterday. That's how much moisture has been pumped on in here. But again, that will change when the front moves through. Now, when you look at the uh, satellite computer model, uh, try and pick out where the front is. You really can't see it. It's basically right along this line here. So it is definitely going to be coming through dry, but it will move through about dinner time, and then that will shift the wind around. That's going to get rid of the humidity and it's going to allow for some temperatures to be a little bit lower in the morning tomorrow. And then we stay lower in the afternoon, just down to normal readings. Also, it's going to be windy in behind that front later on tonight and tomorrow. And again, we've got very cold temperatures up the north. We are on the hot side. We're going to be staying very warm for the next couple of days but it is looking like some of that, uh, look at that, that light purple, almost whitish color up there in Canada is going to be working its way down to the south, and we're going to be getting a fairly decent chunk of that, it looks like, by about this time or right around midweek next week. 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Again, we still keep some humidity around here throughout most of the day, so it's gonna, you'll notice that 80 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Front moves through about dinner time, breezy overnight, down into the uh, about mid to upper 40s tomorrow, and then mid 60s for a high temperature tomorrow. And we'll have sort of a uh, mixture of sunshine and clouds, windy in the morning. And the weekend looks very nice. It is gonna be on the mild side, right around 70 or so. Cool mornings, warm start next week, but then that front moves through, and um, again, the timing of it, a little iffy, but Looking at, say, mid-50s, mid-40s for high temperatures, and we have another shot perhaps at a freeze by late next week. What a change. Yeah, big change. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're 523, still 58 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at the official Coming to America trailer, plus a first for female directors in the Golden Globes. In entertainment news this morning, the latest look at a long-awaited comedy sequel and a video featuring some far-flung musicians. Plus, a first for women at the Golden Globes. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Hello, I am Hakeem Jaffer, King of Zamunda. You are the heir to the throne. Yeah, it's my son. Here's a look at the official trailer for the Eddie Murphy sequel, Coming to America. The prince is now King Akeem in search of his long lost male heir. The sequel arrives on Amazon Prime March 5th. Cherie 
Jimmy Curry's latest quarantine video is Rock and Roll Oblivion, off her new album, Boulevards of Splendor. The former Runaways singer connected with musicians across the U.S., several of whom she found on Facebook, to make the video, which was edited by a 17-year-old Runaways fan. Who needs brains? They never did a girl any good. For the first time in history, more women than men were nominated for Best Director Golden Globes. Emerald Fennell for Promising Young Woman, Regina King for One Night in Miami, and Chloe Zhao for Nomadland. Only five other female directors had been nominated in the Globe's first 77 years, and only Barbara Streisand won for Yentl in 1983. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I want to check out all those movies. I know, looks good. Yep, I popped up uh, One Night in Miami on Amazon Prime yesterday. Need to actually start the thing, though. Okay, oh, so it's on Amazon. All right, thank yep. you. Got it. 528, 58 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, while Republican Re Representative Liz Cheney is keeping her leadership post, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has made several controversial remarks, finds out her fate today. Chick-fil-A has a Valentine's Day special for all the chicken lovers in your life. Hello, good morning. It is Thursday, February 4th. Don't look at the temperature in the corner. Let's just leave it to Mike. I want it to be a surprise. Mike, take it away. Yeah, I mean, we're close to closer to our normal high temperature right now than we are the normal low, which is in the low 40s and normal high being in the mid 60s. So you, know, and you just kind of extrapolate from there throughout the rest of today. It's going to be it's going to be basically hot. Yesterday was mid 70s. Today we're looking at about 80 degrees. And this morning we are starting off right around at 60. Dew points 57. 60 is the number with dew points where you really kind of start to feel the humidity. But I'll tell you what, you step outside, you definitely feel the humidity. Southerly wind continues to pump all that in there. And with all that extra humidity, we do have some fog. Now, it was definitely thicker in places around Castorville, Stinson earlier this morning, about an hour ago, and things have definitely improved, but we still have some down around uh, well, Pleasanton, and then also further out toward Rock Springs, got some fog out there, and we just got to be on the lookout, so even though things have improved, doesn't mean visibility can't drop down in the next couple of hours, which it may indeed do. 72 degrees today at noon, we'll have a lot of these clouds around this morning, and then more sunshine later on today, 80 for a high temperature, wind primarily out of the south to southwest uh, throughout the afternoon and then front's going to move through about dinner time or early evening and that's going to shift the wind around get rid of the humidity it's also going to be windy tonight as well as the first part of the day tomorrow and won't be seeing 80 will just be about normal tomorrow mild weekend and then we got some big news for next week details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority samuel king and uh, map looks okay uh, looking uh, okay a lot of the fog as you're mentioning on our road conditions tool here has really uh, receded in, in much of the area so we'll keep an eye on that uh, we do have a situation here this is a uh, 410 uh, jones maltzberger oh, here's the airport over here uh, this is mccullough right here and this is uh, the situation is we do have a crew on, on the way to this. Understand it might be some sort of uh, extraction operation going on there, so we'll bring you more on that. But the good thing right now here is, uh, especially on 410, the traffic flow uh, is looking okay at this hour because we don't have uh, many uh, people, not as many people out on the road. You can see the times here uh, to nine minutes between 35 and I-10 and eight minutes going uh, the other direction. So, so that looks good uh, as well. Looking at some travel times of coming in from Pleasanton mentioned though there's still some fog down near 28 minutes on 37, 27 minutes if you're coming in from Bolverde on 281, half an hour on I-10 from Seguin. And here is a look at uh, Transguide cameras around the area, 35 at Bamsey. See some uh, mist and low clouds there, but things look fine. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Local law enforcement officers are on a mission to find two men, the suspects in the shooting of a Balcones Heights police sergeant. In a late night news conference, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar released information on the two men and asked for the public's help in tracking them down. Our Katrina Weber is live outside the Balcones Heights Police Department with that story. Now, Katrina, we know that information included photos of the suspects. How were investigators able to get them? Well, the sheriff whose office is helping with that investigation says that the photos came from the body camera of the sergeant who was shot. He says thanks to those photos, they know who they're looking for. Now it's a matter of trying to track them down. And those two men are wanted in the shooting of Balcones Heights Sergeant Joey Sepulveda yesterday afternoon. He and another officer are investigating some suspicious activity, possible car burglary suspects 
at an apartment complex in the 6900 block of Interstate 10 when someone started shooting at them. Sepulveda was hit in the neck and shoulder, and the sheriff says the shooter continued to shoot as he ducked for cover. He identified the 27-year-old backseat passenger in the picture as the actual shooter, along with the 30-year-old driver. They are related. They are among the most cowardly people that I've ever had the displeasure of dealing with uh, in, this, in my 28-year career. Yeah, the sheriff released those photos late last night. Now, although investigators know the names of the suspects, Salazar declined to release them. Instead, he gave the initials of the suspected shooter as WM and said the driver's initials are SM. He's hoping that someone who knows them will offer some leads. He says that driver may also have been injured in the shooting. Now, as far as the sergeant goes, the last word we had is that he underwent surgery and is still in the hospital. The officer who was with him was not hit by any of the gunfire. Reporting live in Balcones Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we will keep up, you updated as the story continues to, to develop. Other headlines this morning, former President Donald Trump's influence still hovers over the Republican Party. This week, GOP infighting over the party's future hit a critical moment for two Republican lawmakers. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Third-ranked Republican Representative Liz Cheney is staying put. We're not going to be divided and that we're not going to be in a situation where people can pick off uh, any member of leadership. Cheney holds on to her post in the GOP's House leadership after a secret ballot Wednesday night. Some Republicans had lobbied for Cheney to be removed after she voted last month to impeach former President Donald Trump a second time. We're very candid and honest with each other, but address this as a family and address this as a team and ultimately finally worked to have a vote where we kept the entire team together. And on Thursday, Democrats are expected to push for a vote on whether to remove Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene from all House committees. The pro-Trump freshman congresswoman from Georgia is drawing heat and support for numerous controversial statements made before she was elected. There is an Islamic invasion into our government offices right now. Although some members say the GOP remains united, some analysts say Green is causing significant tension. This is a really serious matter, and I hope that they, that I don't think she's going to apologize, and if she doesn't, she should lose her committees. I was the first one to say that. All you're going to do is keep the base coming back, and you will continue to lose those areas that allowed Joe Biden to become the president of the United States. I'm John Lawrence reporting. American Airlines is warning employees it may need to furlough 13,000 workers in April after the U.S. government payroll aid expires. American CEO said in a staff memo the coronavirus vaccine is not being distributed as quickly as they believed it would. He said new restrictions on international travel requiring customers to have a negative COVID test have hurt demand. The memo goes out tomorrow. The company says it plans to work with union leaders to lessen the job impact as much as possible. And the airline will help in union efforts to get Congress to extend payroll aid through September. Former President Obama's Presidential Center plan for the south side of Chicago gets formal approval. With the four-year federal review process cleared, the Obama Foundation announced it expects to start construction as early as August. The location is Jackson Park. The federal review was needed because the park is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The Obama Foundation estimates the project will cost about $500 million. Back here at home, 538, about 58 degrees. And still ahead, how the popular brand Impossible Foods is planning to get more people to buy their products in grocery stores. If you are headed out shortly, be advised you could run into some fog, perhaps a little bit of drizzle. We'll get updated with Mike Ostrage, and we'll check on the roads once again, get an update on that north side, north side incident with our traffic authority, Samuel King. A race to rescue survivors of a plane wreck. A church caving in at an out-of-control semi slams head-on into a state trooper. Those are just some of the effects of this week's historic winter storms. CNN's Daryl Forges has the latest. It's definitely total. It's a surprise anybody lived. Rescue crews face what seemed like an impossible feat, reaching this small plane crash in a remote Massachusetts field covered in more than a foot of snow. Luckily for all three survivors on board and their dog, snowmobilers nearby race to the rescue. We put him on the sled. We put another person in a, in a stretcher. We got him down. Uh, we brought another woman down with their poodle. 
The record-breaking snowfall from this week's deadly nor'easter also causing the roof of a near century-old church in New Jersey to cave in. It just could not withstand all of that pressure. Total roof collapse here at the church. Across the country, an Idaho State Trooper's dash cam caught the moment a semi lost control on a slick roadway and jackknifed into his cruiser. Now, winter is forecast to take most of the country into its icy grip again this week and in Iowa, where blizzard warnings are now in effect. Crews are prepping hundreds of plows to battle another storm. Making sure that those blades are replaced and that we're not having to do it in the middle of a snow event. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. 542, about 58 degrees. According to TxDOT, Texas has had an average of 10 traffic fatalities a day on Texas roadways. Up next, we're going to tell you about a program that is helping to end that trend. 545, a special program of the Texas Department of Transportation started up this week. RJ Marcus explains how the Be Safe, Drive Smart program works and how it's meant to protect all motorists, especially those who drive large trucks. TxDOT's Be Safe, Drive Smart campaign is urging motorists to be alert and exercise caution when traveling around large trucks on Texas roadways. Every day, thousands of large trucks and tractor trailers travel busy Texas highways, weighing 20 times more than an average car. An 80,000 pound loaded tractor trailer going 65 miles per hour can take as much as the length of a football field to come to a complete stop, which is why TxDOT says motorists should avoid driving too closely or swerving in front of a large truck. Tractor trailers and large trucks also have more and larger blind spots than passenger vehicles do. A good rule of thumb for motorists to remember is that if they can't see the truck driver in the truck's side mirror, that truck driver can't see them or their vehicle either. To help keep everyone safe on the road, TxDOT says you have to do several things. One, pass trucks safely by waiting until you can see both truck headlights in your rearview mirror before moving back into your lane. Also, maintain a safe following distance and never cross behind a truck that is backing up. And don't squeeze between a truck and the curb. Trucks make wide right turns and the driver may not see you. Be Safe, Drive Smart is part of the End the Streak Texas program. November 7, 2000 was the last deathless day on Texas roadways. TxDOT is asking all Texans to commit to driving safely to help end the streak of daily deaths on Texas roadways, especially around large vehicles. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. In your morning consumer headlines, Impossible Foods is cutting its prices by 20%, saying its goal is to help the environment. The company reports record sales of its plant-based products. Now it's reducing what it charges the 17,000 groceries that carry the brand. The idea is to pass on the savings to consumers, making a 12-ounce package of Impossible Burger cost about $5.50. Impossible Foods says reduction is an effort to attract more consumers and take business from meat industries. Chick-fil-A hopes your love language is fried chicken. The fast food chain now offering to package select menu items in heart-shaped trays. The new packaging celebrates Valentine's Day. You can select chicken minis, nuggets, cookies, or brownies to go inside of the trays. The trays will be available at participating restaurants through Saturday, February 13th, because Sunday's Chick-fil-A is, is always closed. closed. I know, and that's when I wake up and I forget it's Sunday. I'm like, oh yeah, let's get Chick-fil-A. Oh yeah, they're closed. That's the day we all want <laughs> Chick-fil-A the most, right? The day yes. we can't have it. That's okay. We'll wait till Monday then. 548, let's get an update on the situation out there. Uh, Samuel, earlier you were tracking an incident not too far from San Antonio International. Yeah, that's right, and we have a transguide view of the situation here. This is uh, the view from uh, 410 in McCullough. You can see uh, traffic having to navigate around that situation there. Not as many units on the scene there, but you can still tell it's uh, pretty active with the with the lights. So let's take a look at the map here where it is, and now we have it in our system, so you're seeing it doubly there, but uh, this is at 410 eastbound at jones Maltzberger Road. Start to see that delay heading eastbound uh, there near the airport, as you mentioned, Mark. And uh, here's a look at uh, 410, the travel time now 11 minutes uh, heading from 35 to I-10, eight minutes heading from uh, 35 to I-10. And one more uh, travel time here, just looking out uh, Fredericksburg Road this morning, uh, 14 minutes between Woodlawn and Hebner, 15 minutes the other way. We also have a crash being reported now at uh, Old Pearsall and Loop 410 on the southwest side. We'll take a look at that uh, coming up, guys. 
Very good. And then behind you, Mike, that sunset is beautiful. I got to see it last night as well when we were bike riding and, and actually trying to get home before it got too dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, yesterday was a fantastic day to go for a bike ride. Uh, today is as well. Now it is humid out there. Uh, so you're definitely going to feel the, the warm spring-like temperatures today with some of that humidity. That will be changing, though, later on this evening. Yeah, it's a beautiful picture out there at Alamo Ranch. Thank you very much for that. And uh, kind of fuzzy looking right there along the horizon. And visibility is okay in this view. And as far as fog down around Pleasanton, that's the thickest right now in the metropolitan area. There is some out west. As a matter of fact, Rock Springs has dropped down now to uh, just a half mile visibility and some around you Valley as well as Carrizo Springs. So we got to you know, be on the lookout for this. Just keep monitoring things over the next couple of hours. Humidity stays pretty high throughout the day, but then dinner time, the front moves on through here and we get that drier air coming on in. So again, that's going to uh, allow temperatures to be a little bit cooler tomorrow morning. Then also we get a little shove of some uh, drier or cooler air. And so that's going to keep temperatures at about normal readings by tomorrow. So instead of 80, we'll be about 65 for a high temperature. When the front moves through, it's not going to do much of anything. Here's early evening dinner time and that I mean, maybe an extra cloud or two, and that'll be about it. So it's not going to be squeezing out any uh, moisture at all, unfortunately. So satellite picture, a couple of clouds out there this morning, and they'll be clearing on out. Got a big storm system up to the north of us, and this is actually what's going to be helping to push that front through here. Um, but it's basically a Pacific front, so it's just some drier air that comes in slightly uh, cooler temperatures because the anomaly out ahead of that front. Now, what's interesting is watching the upper level steering winds. Here's the big storm system. This pulls that front on through here and we go on into the weekend. Actually, we'll warm up ever so slightly. So there's that massive uh, blob of air, if you will, that cold air up there around Canada and the northern part of the United States. Now, one thing to take note of, though, upper level winds. So this is a couple of miles up in the atmosphere and we're not seeing anything coming straight down from Canada. However, when you come down to the surface, this is what's going to be going on next week. We stay very mild in through the first part of the week. Then that cold air is going to kind of sneak underneath those upper level winds. And so we'll get a nice big chunk of that colder air coming on in here for the uh, mid to latter part of next week. So you don't always have to have the upper level winds pulling that down in here, but we will have, like I said, that shallow layer of some pretty cold air. 72 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature gets up to 80. 15 degrees above normal, five away from the record. Then tomorrow, back to reality. We start off in the 40s, up to 65. Mild weekend. I also just changed numbers, got some updated information. So uh, staying in the 70s, Monday and Tuesday, then that front moves through. It's going to be windy on Wednesday and probably just in the 40s on Wednesday. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Four exactly. falls so out. We'll see. A 30 degree difference basically in temperatures as it's looking right now between Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Okay, we'll try to remember to be prepared. And remember, sweatpants goes with everything. Oh, yes, fashion right. statement. <laughs> 552, 58 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick 3013, Fireball 3, and Daily 4, 1402, Fireball 2. Cash 5 numbers 418, 21, 28, 35, Lotto Texas, 368, 9, 19, 22. And Powerball, 5, 37, 40, 64, 66, Powerball 5, Power Play 3. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the House is set to vote on stripping Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from her committee assignments. The vocal QAnon enthusiast under fire for pushing the extremist conspiracy theories. And this morning, the new Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, going to join us live exclusively for her first TV interview since being sworn in for her historic role. All the latest from Washington this morning, right here on GMA. Be sure to tune in to SA Live today. Jen Tobias Strusky chats with Academy Award winning actor Matthew McConaughey in a San Antonio exclusive. The Texas native shares more on his New York Times bestselling book Green Lights and reminisces about visits here to San Antonio. Also dishes the story behind one of his most memorable lines. All right, all right, all right. This is the first three words I said in film in 1992 on a, on, on improvised on the first day on a job that hell, I didn't know if that was going to be like a one off. Like I would be a, a lawyer right now going, oh, I remember back in 92. That was really fun. I got that little acting gig and that film called Days of Fuse, my one and only 
time I ever got to do it. Well, it turned out to be much more than a hobby. Yes, the movie that started off for McConaughey dazed and confused his book full of Texas stories and Jen shares more from the interview today at one o'clock on the SA Live right here on KSAT 12. We'd like to remind you our KSAT community partner University Health is hosting a blood drive this month. It's happening February 18th and 19th from 10 to 3 at the Whitty Museum over on Broadway. If you want to donate, you can make an appointment by calling 210-358. 2812 or visit donatebloodtoday.com. You can also find this information on ksatcommunity.com. Glad you're with us on this Thursday morning. Suicide, always a tough subject to talk about, but it's the second leading cause of death for teens, and experts say it is on the rise right now. Ahead on GMSA, how teens are stepping up to help their peers at risk. Trans guide right now, Samuel wanted to show us this latest. So this is eastbound Loop 410 at McCullough over by the airport. We've got an incident that continues. First responders on the scene. Traffic is slow in the area, but at least it's moving. We'll be back. Investigators say they have photos of the suspects in the shooting of the Balcones side sergeant. Now it's a matter of tracking them down. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the latest on that story. Some local school districts are having to lower requirements for someone to be a substitute teacher. It comes during a shortage of subs during the pandemic. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 58 degrees, a humid start to your day, and in some places a little bit foggy, so be careful out there on the roadways. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, February 4th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It does not feel like February, at least not right now. Not even close. And Mike says we might be near record territory later on today. A lot closer to that than the normal high temperature. We're going to be up to uh, 80 for a high later on today. The record's 85. Uh, I don't think we're going to be hitting it, but I mean, there's going to be some folks that are going to be pushing at 90, especially down to the southwest along the, the Rio Grande Valley. Visibility in this picture is okay. We do have a little bit of, although, I mean, it's nowhere near what it was, uh, say, an hour and a half ago when we, we first started this morning. There was zero visibility around Castorville. Now there is no fog really to speak speak of uh, a lot out around Rock Springs. Valley Carrizo Springs has also just dropped down. So we got to watch this again over the next couple of hours. You may see a little bit of fog more trying to form up still at 60 right now. Mid upper 50s around the area. We're about um, anywhere from 15, almost 20 degrees above normal. Temperatures are going to be staying steady this morning. By the way, where there is some of that fog, there may be a little bit of mist hanging around here. Clouds going to be fairly stubborn this morning. We will make it up to 72 degrees at noon today and then has been talking about we're going to be topping off at 80 later on. Now there is a front that's going to move through here about dinner time or so. That's going to bring in drier air. It's going to be windy tonight as well as tomorrow morning, kind of back to reality. And this is going to be a mild weekend in the first part of next week. Then some big changes coming about. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and well, Picture says it all right behind you. Yeah, we have this situation, Mike, at uh, 410 at uh, Jones Maltzberger, and the view you're seeing right here on Transguide is uh, at the camera at McCullough Avenue. So thanks for Transguide for providing that for us. You can see the travel down right in that area down to one lane. Let's take a look at this uh, on the map uh, here. This is Jones Maltzberger. Uh, this is where that uh, report is, and you can see the slowdown here down to 11 miles per hour there. Uh, so that situation uh, is going to be going on for a little bit, but you can, if so, if you need to head to uh, the airport this morning and usually take 410 or, or some other way to get there, uh, you might want to find uh, some way to navigate around that uh, this, this morning until this is uh, squared away. We also have a crash reported here on the southwest side, uh, or we did. Uh, this was at uh, Old Pearsall Road at Loop 410. You can see a little bit of a delay still on Old Pearsall, but 410 is moving fine. Looking at some travel times around the region, let's stay on the west side, 19 minutes on 90 from Castroville, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle, 29 minutes uh, from the Pleasanton area on 37. Meanwhile, 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels on I-35. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. They have the photos, they have the names. Now investigators want to catch the men who they say shot a Balcones Heights police sergeant in cold blood. Sheriff Javier Salazar put out an appeal for help late last night. Our Katrina Weber is live at the Balcones Heights Police Department with that story. Now Katrina, is there any update on the condition of the sergeant? 
The last information that was released was that he had undergone surgery for gunshot wounds in his neck and shoulder. There was a second officer with him at the time, but he was not wounded. Now, those two men, those two officers were both at an apartment complex in the 6900 block of Interstate 10 yesterday afternoon, checking out some people who they thought might be committing car burglaries. Chair Javier Salazar says that's when someone began shooting at them, hitting Sergeant Joey Sepulveda twice, and he says the person continued shooting as Sepulveda tried to duck for cover. Salazar says they were able to see the whole thing, everything that happened by way of the sergeant's body camera. The video, he says, was disturbing. We watched this video, and it's a heart-wrenching video to see. They gunned down this, this officer, in, in very much in cold blood. The, the, the backseat shooter looked him right in the eye and then shot him point blank. Investigators believe they know who those men were in the video. They say the suspected shooter is a 27-year-old who was in the back seat of the car, while the driver is a 30-year-old man. Salazar says the driver also may have been wounded as the officer shot back. Now, again, investigators do know their names, and Salazar says that those two men are related. Now, he declined to release their names, but he did say that the suspected shooter's initials are WM, while the drivers are SM. And he's hoping that someone who knows them will come forward and offer them some leads. Reporting live in Balcones Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is dead after a drive-by shooting. It happened around 1030 last night outside a home in the 9100 block of Roquefort Drive. That's in a neighborhood near New Gilbo and Loop 1604 on the northwest side. They say the man was pronounced dead at the scene after being shot in the head. Now, police say they have a vehicle and possible suspect in custody. We'll update you on this story throughout the day as we learn more. This morning, San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect involved in a deadly shooting on the east side last night. It happened at a house in the 4300 block of Skeleton Drive. That's near East Houston, just outside of Loop 410. Investigators found a 52 year old man with three gunshot wounds to his torso in the front yard. Police say the man did not live at the area home, but was in his car outside one of the homes. Investigators say they believe a suspect or group of suspects walked up to the man and shot at him. To the pandemic, local health officials report 1,012 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. 15 more deaths were also reported. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is now below 1,500 cases a day. Meanwhile, Metro Health calling on health care providers and labs to be more consistent while sequencing every single case of COVID-19. The goal is to try to track any variant that may show up in San Antonio. Just yesterday, Travis County health officials confirmed a case of the UK variant in Austin. San Antonio school districts say a staffing shortage is adding another challenge to this school year. Northeast ISD's executive director of communication says there was a need for substitutes before the pandemic, and now she says that need has only grown. She calls the current challenge a perfect storm and says the district even had to reduce qualifications for substitute teachers. So now we are allowing subs to come in that have 60 hours of college credit instead of having to have a degree. Meanwhile, Northside ISD says their challenge is finding substitute teachers willing to work the length of a quarantine period. Both school districts say that no matter the situation, schools are prepared to provide high quality instruction at all times. Houston, the latest city to cancel its 2021 stock show and rodeo. Fort Worth and Austin have also canceled their shows this year. Houston originally postponed its rodeo to May, but said an ongoing health situation prompted cancellation. Here at home, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo is scheduled to take place as scheduled. Organizers say it will happen despite calls from Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf to postpone it due to the pandemic. Today, the U.S. House of Representatives will vote on the role Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia will have in the government. Before running for Congress, Representative Greene supported that uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi should be executed. She also publicly claimed that school shootings such as Parkland and Sandy Hook massacres were staged. But this morning, some Republicans are suggesting there is a double standard at play. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Overnight, Republicans on Capitol Hill meeting privately to air out their differences. And we're very candid and honest with each other. It comes as Democrats plan to vote in just hours to strip Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of her committee assignments. 
The freshman lawmaker has been under fire for making outlandish and false statements, claiming that school shootings were staged and questioning the 9-11 attacks. It's odd there's never any evidence shown for a plane in the Pentagon. Republican leaders say Green apologized last night for those comments. But Green has not publicly apologized, saying this on Tuesday. I have said things I shouldn't say at some time or another, but I don't think I have anything to apologize for. Democrats announced today's vote after House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy decided not to remove Green from the House Education and Labor and Budget Committees. If we are now going to start judging what other members have said before they're even members of Congress, I think it's going to be a hard time for the Democrats to place anybody on committee. McCarthy accusing Democrats of a double standard, mentioning Democrat Ilhan Omar, who's been under scrutiny for remarks critical of Israel, and Steve King, the former Republican congressman who was removed from his committees in 2019 after racist remarks. Congresswoman Liz Cheney will keep her leadership role within the Republican Party. Cheney has been under pressure from Trump loyalists after voting to impeach the former president. A majority of Republicans in the House voted last night in favor of keeping Cheney in power. But exactly who backed Cheney isn't known because the vote was by secret ballot. It was a very resounding acknowledgement that we uh, need to go forward together. And back to today's vote on Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Democrats have the majority in the House, so if all of them vote against her, she will lose her committee assignments. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. Shifting gears at 610. While it's nice to live in this mild climate during winter, it also means road construction never really takes a break. And that's the subject of this week's SAQ. Your traffic authority, Samuel King, joins us now. And Samuel, this is about construction barriers, right? Yeah, specifically the concrete ones, Stephanie and Mark. They definitely serve a safety purpose, but they can cause anxiety for drivers. And Pat asked, why does TxDOT have to put up concrete barriers on the outside traffic lanes? This creates more car damage, anxiety when driving along those major roads. Well, we did reach out to TxDOT Pat and a spokeswoman tells us that the barriers are one of many tools to enhance the safety of both drivers and construction crews. The type of barrier used depends on the traffic count and what's the speed limit in a particular area. Now, in 2019, more than 26,000 crashes occurred in work zones in Texas, resulting in 167 fatalities and 690 serious injuries. So safe driving is critically important. Uh, things like slowing down, not tailgating, and just being aware. If you have a question you'd like answered, head to our traffic page. It's ksat.com slash traffic, or find me, Samuel King, on Facebook. Mark, Stephanie? Oh, we'll find you on Facebook, Samuel King. Right now it's 611, 59 degrees. And if you recently got the COVID-19 vaccine, don't reach for the ibuprofen. We're going to find out what you should do about the pain later on GMSA. Interesting. All right, we all know about Valentine's Day traditions, but after the break, we'll take a look at some of the history behind those traditions. Sarah Costa has all the details. It's like she got a major on this in college or something. <laughs> and good timing. So there's your public service announcement that Valentine's Day falls on a Amen. Sunday this year, February 14th. Hey, taking a look out with live cam, a little humid out there. We'll be right back. Valentine's Day, you know it's coming right after Christmas when the aisles at the stores instantly turn from green and red to red and pink with chocolates and hearts everywhere. But let's talk about where some of those traditions come from. Either you love Valentine's Day or just believe it's an overly commercialized holiday that just adds more pressure to your love life. Valentine's Day was started with the Catholic Church's Feast of St. Valentine on the day he was executed by the Roman Emperor in 270 AD, according to Reader's Digest. Many legends surround his death, like one that says he was a priest who married young couples after the emperor of that time outlawed marriage for young men so they would be better soldiers. Hence where the idea of celebrating love came from on the feast day. But where did the heart shape come from? Some believe it was inspired by a now extinct plant called Silphium from the African city state of Cyrene. The shapes of its leaves were heart shaped and the plant was used for food coloring, a cough syrup and an aphrodisiac. It's also been long believed that the color red is the color of passion. It makes you more attractive. Scientists at the University of Rochester even did a study that found people were more 
more attracted to others who wore red. But where did the chocolates come from? Uh, well, apparently it just makes for good marketing. Richard Cadbury started designing ornate boxes for his chocolates to come in, including a heart-shaped one that may have changed the industry forever. And even though lovers get all the attention when it comes to Valentine's Day, everyone can celebrate without being involved romantically. According to Good Housekeeping, the most common recipients of Valentine's Day cards are actually teachers, most likely due to having several students in their classrooms. Back to you. Aww. Yeah, that does make it fun for the kids, you know, exchanging Valentine's, although it will be interesting to see how we approach it this year. This year is obviously still a little different. Right. Hey, when you check on the roads right now, uh, Samuel's been tracking an incident over between kind of North Star and the airport, and do we have some good news? Yeah, well, the good news is traffic is starting to flow here again in, in both directions. This is the Transguide view from 410 and McCullough, and you can see uh, the traffic in the foreground there flowing pretty well after we had those delays just a, a short time ago. Let's take a look at it on the map here, you can still uh, see a, a slowdown, but again, as you saw, the traffic is moving particularly uh, eastbound. And that travel time, let's look at 410 east, 13 minutes now between 35, uh, between I-10 and 35. So still a delay, but as you saw there, the traffic is flowing. And uh, again, here inside at uh, 35 to 281, gets even better four to five minutes each way. I also have a crash reported here on 281. Uh, this is northbound at Almost Drive, but if you look at the drive time between downtown and 1604, uh, 12 minutes right now, so that looks good. Mike, some fog in some parts of the area, but not really seeing it in town. No, we and we didn't see much uh, for about the past hour. Now, earlier there was some around Stinson, a lot around uh, Castroville, but the metropolitan area is pretty much fog free for the time being. We might still see a little bit trying to pop up. Temperatures are going to be staying steady. We're at 60 right now, and that's pretty much where we're going to be throughout the rest of the morning. And then we get up to 80 later on this afternoon and plenty of sunshine. Speaking of that, look at those high clouds. I think we still will keep a few high clouds around today, but what a beautiful picture. Love that. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, this vantage point there, this is 410 I-10 looking off to the east. And yes, there are plenty of clouds, but visibility is okay right here. Pleasanton now was doing okay. It's dropped back down to three quarters of a mile, half mile Rock Springs and Carrizo Springs at a half mile visibility right now. So again, Pleasanton it was up to about to what? Six, seven miles visibility just a few minutes ago. So it's dropped back down. That's what we have to watch out for in the next couple of hours. Now, as far as water vapor imagery, and this is one of the reasons why we might see a few uh, and high level clouds because you got that moisture aloft in the atmosphere. So some of those high wispy clouds, that milky shade to the sky. Still uh, plenty of sunshine today and a satellite picture. There's some of the uh, low clouds hanging around here. That kind of darker shade of gray usually indicates some of those lower clouds in the atmosphere. Big storm system up to the north of us, and this is pretty much what's going to be pulling the front through here later on this afternoon or this evening about dinner time or early evening hours. So we're going to be very warm, very humid out ahead of that front. Then we get some of this uh, colder air. It's not going to be cold, cold. I mean, we'll be back down to normal readings and then have some cool mornings over the weekend, but nothing too extreme and nothing like what we're seeing up there to the north. However, uh, by next week, we're going to start to see some significant changes. We'll stay pretty mild. As a matter of fact, uh, it's going to be slightly warmer over the weekend, right around 70 or so for high temperatures, and then probably even a little bit warmer going into the first part of next week. However, this massive cold air up there in Canada is going to start to edge its way down to the south, and it looks like Tuesday night and into Wednesday, we will see a pretty good chunk of that colder air moving on in here, and it also looks like it's going to be sticking around for at least the latter part of next week and then going into uh, the uh, Valentine's Day weekend. So that's don't put your coats away yet. 70 don't need them today though. 72 degrees, partly cloudy skies we may still have some um, still some stubborn leftover patches of fog in through uh, mid morning and then later on this afternoon a lot more sunshine 80 winds are going to be out of the west primarily. Then they'll shift around about dinner time when the front moves through. It's going to be breezy tonight and the first part of the day tomorrow we'll start off 47. Chilly, not cold, 65 for high, normal, about 70 over the weekend, starting off in the low 40s. Nice looking weekend and mild starting off next week, but then the bottom drops out about midweek. And like I said, it looks like that chunk of cold air as of right now is going to be sticking around for about 
four or five days at least. But there is an asterisk there, a subject to change, of course, right? Well, yeah, being still a, a week away, but a couple of long range computer models are kind of kind of in sync a little bit now. So that's always always encouraging when things are you know, agreeing. It's always so sweet when Mother Nature slaps us upside the head like that. Wake us up. Yeah. yeah 45 <laughs> degrees for a high. Good Lord. Thank we'll you, keep Mike. our jackets handy. Thank yes, you. Yes, we will. 622, 59 degrees. And if you went to bed before the end of the Spurs game, you missed a comeback. We're going to have the highlights and reactions later on GMSA. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Your dry skin story changes from one day to the next. Try use for an advanced repair and switch. It doubles your skin's moisture and repairs dry skin over time. So tomorrow can be a different story. Userin, recommended and used by dermatologists. Get sick too. Protection. Lysol laundry sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of illness causing bacteria detergents leave behind. Proven to kill COVID 19. At Panera, when we make a pizza, we don't just make a pizza. We use fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Order our new pepperoni and four cheese flatbread pizzas for delivery or pickup today. Panera. For skin that never holds you back. Don't settle for silver. Number one for diabetic dry skin. Number one for psoriasis symptom relief. And number one for eczema symptom relief. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Trending right now on KSAT.com, health officials say you should not take a painkiller before or after getting the COVID-19 vaccine unless prescribed by a doctor. A study shows that common painkillers such as ibuprofen might curb the immune response to the vaccine. The CDC says you should hold a cool, wet washcloth on your arm if it hurts and move it around. For a fever, drink lots of water and dress lightly. And right now, event organizers around San Antonio are grappling with the decision to hold events, postpone them, or cancel them. And it can be a lot to keep up with. We currently have a running list on our website with every event from Fiesta to local concerts and what the status of that event is. One event that is a go, San Antonio Burger Week. And this year will benefit the San Antonio Food Bank. More than local, 30 local restaurants will participate, but they've not been named just yet. The event takes place February 26th through March 7th. You can find all these trending stories on ksat.com. Very good. Time now is 626 and 59 degrees for now. New study could be a breakthrough for one COVID-19 vaccine. We'll see what has some scientists hopeful about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And taking a look out with TransSky, looks like the problem we had there at 410 McCullough clearing up. Traffic is flowing right there. We're going to check in with Samuel about your other roadways after the break. The secondary officer does an outstanding job of coming up and, and returning fire. We believe that that, they, that is that was effective fire. Uh, again, the driver who we and we know his initials are SM. Uh, we believe that he was wounded in that exchange of gunfire. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says one officer's quick thinking may be what helped his partner survive a shootout in Balcones Heights. We will get the latest on the officer's condition and an update on the search for the suspects involved in that shooting. Some glimmers of hope in the fight against the coronavirus. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington with details on a possible new vaccine and some declining COVID numbers coming up. And on the lookout for some fog this morning, it's a bit on the warm side, unseasonably warm, you could say. And Mike says we could be headed for some quite warm temperatures later on when things really get heating up. 631, 59 degrees. Good morning. It is February 4th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, warm and humid this morning. Mike, you said we'll be flirting with a record high temperature. Yeah, in the in the neighborhood. We're not going to be hitting the record today, but it is going to be well, almost hot and humid. Humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the day, and we'll have temperatures that will be about 15 degrees above normal. Visibility-wise, not bad over there. This is I-10-410 looking off to the east. We're still at 60. Normal low temperature is low 40s. The humidity remains very high wind is out of the uh, south primarily and visibility in and around town is pretty good. There's a hint of fog around Stinson Pleasanton 
was down, had a lot of thick fog earlier this morning. Visibility came back up and now it has dropped back down. So just an indication that this fog, you know, the visibility can change moment by moment. And then we got a lot of fog around Rock Springs, Carrizo Springs and uh, hints of it out there to the west. So we still have to and Gonzalez now is uh, showing up with a little bit of fog. So we have to be on the lookout for some of this, at least for the next uh, few hours. Temperatures again, upper 50s, low 60s, way, way out of whack and the humidity, of course, too. But that is going to be changing. We have a front moving through late this afternoon, early evening hours. But prior to that, we will see more sunshine and 80 degrees, and you'll definitely feel that 80 with some of that humidity. But the wind shifts around, gets rid of the humidity. It's going to be breezy overnight tonight and the first part of the day tomorrow and back to normal readings right around 65. Then the weekend is going to kind of warm up ever so slightly, about 70 for high temperatures. Good looking weekend and very warm the first part of next week. But another big chunk of cold air is going to be coming on in here by the middle part of next week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and well, just looking at the map, not much, but there's been uh, yeah, enough we, stuff. Yeah, morning. we've had a situation at 410 near the airport uh, at McCullough, but that has uh, cleared out. So let's take a look at that travel time there on uh, 410 just a few minutes ago. It's about uh, 14, 15 minutes. Now it's down to uh, nine minutes from uh, I-10 to 35. So things definitely improving uh, there. And also looking at travel times from across the uh, region. Mike mentioned the fog in the Pleasanton area, but it's so 28 minutes. It'll take you to from that area to get to downtown San Antonio. 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle. 30 minutes from Seguin on I-10. 24 <coughs> minutes from Bernie on I-10 and 30, uh, 26 minutes on 35 again into downtown San Antonio. And here's a look at Transguide around the area. At 281 at Hildebrand uh, looking fine uh, this morning. Again, that situation at uh, 410 and uh, Jones Maltzberger on the northeast side has cleared up. Guys, back over to you. Investigators say body camera video has offered some big clues. Images of the person who shot a Balcones Heights police sergeant yesterday afternoon. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar released those photos late last night. He hopes they'll lead to the arrest of both the shooting suspect and his getaway driver. Trina Weber is live at Balcones Heights Police Department with that story this morning. And earlier we heard the sheriff say the video from that body camera is disturbing. That's right. He, uh, he described the shooting as cold blooded. He says that the suspect looked the sergeant directly in his eyes before pulling the trigger. That sergeant, Joey Sepulveda, and another officer had gone to an apartment complex in the 6900 block of Interstate 10 yesterday afternoon to investigate some suspicious activity. They approached some people who they thought might be involved in a car burglary, and that is when someone fired the shots. Sepulveda was hit in his neck and shoulder. The other officer was not wounded. Salazar says the officers fired back and may have hit the driver. Now, last night, he told reporters, thanks to the body cam photos, investigators have learned a lot about the suspects, including their names. They are related. They are among the most cowardly people that I've ever had the displeasure of dealing with uh, in, this, in my 28-year career. Salazar says the man shown in the back seat of the car is the suspected shooter, while the other was the driver. He wouldn't release their names, but did identify the shooting suspect as a 27-year-old whose initials are WM. He says the driver's 30 years old and has the initials SM. And he's hoping that someone will provide some leads as to where these suspects might be. But the last word we had on the sergeant is that he had undergone surgery for his gunshot wounds. Reporting live in Balcones Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, one woman is in critical condition after police say she was hit by a vehicle. Officers say it happened just after 11 last night on Highway 181 near South Presa Street on the southeast side. They say the woman was crossing the street when a driver hit her with a vehicle. That driver pulled over and called for help. Officers say the driver was not intoxicated. The woman was rushed to a hospital. San Antonio police also say the two people are in the hospital after a crash on the south side. Officers say a man drove off the road and crashed into a tree. Happened around 11 p.m. on Apple White Road near Watson. Police are still investigating what led up to the crash. They tell us the driver is in critical condition and the passenger is in serious condition at a local hospital. A man shot in the head 
Police searching for several people in this case. The shooting happened back on January 24th on Hicks Avenue. Investigators say four men walked up to the victim and pointed guns at him before kicking him. Eventually, that victim was shot in the head. Police say the suspects in this case are facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The suspects are believed to have left the scene in a dark colored pickup truck or a black GMC Yukon. If you have any information on this case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. This morning, there is another potential COVID-19 vaccine breakthrough. A new study shows that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine protects against the virus and could reduce viral transmission. ABC's Faith Abube has more. Good morning. The FDA is still waiting to see the actual data from that AstraZeneca clinical trial, but if it checks out, health experts say it's much needed good news. For the first time in the coronavirus pandemic, the number of Americans receiving a first dose of COVID vaccine is now greater than the number of reported COVID cases in the U.S., but vaccine demand still outpacing supply. It's heartbreaking when people want the vaccine and are unable to get it. But this morning, promising news of another vaccine on the way. A single dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is up to 76% effective for up to three months and could even keep people from spreading the virus. The news comes as the U.S. continues to see some glimmers of hope in the fight against the virus. Nationwide, seven-day averages of hospitalizations and deaths are declining. On the front lines, nurse Jerusha Robinson tearing up, recalling the hard conversations happening in ICUs. Am I going to die? Am I going to make it out of here? And you have to tell them that we're fighting as hard as we can and we're doing what we can and they're fighting as hard as they can, but the chances are low. And as we head into the Super Bowl weekend, the CDC is urging Americans to avoid large gatherings. Dr. Anthony Fauci adding, quote, lay low and cool it. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. New study finds weekly rapid coronavirus testing can cut infections by 50% in high schools and 35% in primary schools. The Rockefeller Foundation partnered with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for the study. Also notes social distancing reduces transmission by an estimated 88%. And when everyone wears a mask, infections are cut by 40%. And time now is 639 and 59 degrees for now. Suicide is the second leading cause of death for teenagers, and experts say it's on the rise. Just ahead, how teens are stepping up to help their peers at risk. High school is supposed to be a time for making memories, but it's also a time when teens are in turmoil. Amitaj Carr is a first-generation American. In high school, she often felt like she didn't fit in. Yes, there's been countless moments of depression, anxiety, imposter syndrome. Like everyone puts on a mask and not everyone is okay. Amitaj and Rachel were tapped by their peers as teens who were empathetic and trustworthy. Both were selected for an innovative program in their Ohio high school called Hope Squad. They go through a series of training, trainings that prepare them to identify mental health and suicide risk. Those Hope Squad students then would shepherd someone who is at risk to a trusted adult. Wright Berryman is the lead data researcher for Hope Squad, which is in 800 high schools nationwide. Wright Berryman says studies show the stigma surrounding mental health and suicide is much lower in Hope Squad schools compared to those without programs, and teens attending schools with Hope Squads were more likely to seek out help. When it came to direct emergency interventions, I would say within my two years, there were about 20 I did personally. Intervening by encouraging them to seek help and if they won't, alerting trained adults. It's better to have your friend be mad at you and be alive instead of them being dead. Hope Squad was first introduced 20 years ago in Utah and has been adopted in schools across the United States and Canada since then. If you are having thoughts of suicide, call the National Suicide Prevention Line. Erica Fernandez, KSAT 12 News. Coach Pop has always told the team they need a solid 48-minute effort if they want a chance at winning. Well, yesterday all it took was 12 minutes. The Spurs rally from a 16-point deficit to pull out a big win over the Timberwolves at the AT&T Center last night. Silver Black closed the game on a 30-11 run, beating the T-Wolves 111-108. Pop even said he was impressed with how his team hung in there after suffering crushing defeats in their past two games. 
DeMar DeRozan had a game-high 30 points. Jaka Pertl added 19 with 8 rebounds. Spurs head on the road for the next game. They play their I-10 rivals at Houston Rockets. Tip-off is scheduled for 7 o'clock Saturday night. You can watch on a Fox Sports Southwest Kitsch highlights right here on GMSA coming up on Sunday morning. Go Spurs, go. Great job, guys. Yeah, definitely. And, and earlier today, we had some problems on the north side, on the roadways. But let's go ahead and check back with Samuel King. Uh, Stephanie, Mark, that uh, situation at uh, 410 on the north side has uh, cleared and not uh, many delays to speak of on the uh, map right now. So if you need to head out right now, it would be a good time to do so. For instance, on I-10 between uh, Bernie and downtown, 24 minutes. And once you get inside uh, 1604, uh, 11 to 13 minutes. So looking pretty good at the moment, but of course that can change at any time. I still have this construction on uh, 90 between West Military Drive and Southwest 36. That kicks off in about uh, 15 minutes or so, runs uh, through the afternoon. But the travel time again on a on uh, 90 right now looks good inside 1604, 11 uh, minutes in each direction. So that's a uh, pretty good right there. And here's Transguide 410 at Fredericksburg. Traffic flowing smoothly this morning. So again, a good time if you uh, need to head out. This would be the time to do so before things pick back up again, guys. Good advice. And our poor coworker Kevin suffering from <laughs> allergies. We don't know what kind, but I see maybe the culprits behind you. Yeah, wow. you know, the walking allergy commercial, isn't he? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, and there's not a lot of any one thing, but there's a lot of allergens out there. A lot of pollen, mountain cedar, ash, elm are now starting to show up. Molds on the low side. It's going to be interesting uh, what happens with tomorrow's reading because we've got a front moving through tonight and it's going to be very windy overnight and throughout the first part of the day tomorrow. So we'll see if uh, maybe the mountain cedar season is coming to an end or if it's one last little uh, shake of those mountain cedar trees. A drama in the western sky. Great caption there. Boy, beautiful sunset. It's out of high wispy clouds. We keep a lot of those around throughout the day and Low clouds this morning, kind of fuzzy looking just because of all the humidity. Pleasanton, two miles visibility, eight at Stinson. Now it's been kind of flirting. Pleasanton was up and down and back down as far as visibility right now. And we'll just have to watch out. And it's also dropped a little bit up around Bernie stage and then Rock Springs, Carrizo Springs now at zero visibility. So it's something we got to watch out for in the next couple of hours, and it is going to get thicker in places before it clears on out. And humidity dew points remain very high all the way throughout the day, but then so that 80 degrees today for a high temperature, you'll definitely feel it. But then by dinner time, the front moves on in here. And like I said, it's going to be windy. Get rid of all the, the humidity. It's going to be much more pleasant tomorrow. Also, temperatures are going to be down closer to normal readings in the in the afternoon up 65 degrees as opposed to 80 today. And we'll keep the dry air around for uh, most of tomorrow and then Saturday. And temperatures will kind of rebound a little bit and bopping up somewhat by the weekend. And as far as anything going on, I mean, there, you know, maybe one or two clouds here and there, especially in the mornings, but we've got nothing but a lot of sunshine around here, and that's going to be the case all the way through the first part of next week. So a lot of cold air up to the north, but obviously we aren't seeing any of that, and it's going to stay very mild throughout the next uh, about four or five days, at least through the weekend and first part of next week. And that cold air is just kind of hanging out up there in the northern portion of the country. However, it is looking like that that cold air will definitely start to work its way down here with a big strong front moving through Tuesday into Wednesday and then that massive cold air would be sticking around and through the latter part of next week and it looks like as of right now into Valentine's weekend 72 at noon partly cloudy skies high temperature today up to 80 records 85 close to it I don't think we're gonna be hitting that we're looking at uh, probably some mid and upper 80s uh, down to the uh, west and to the southwest along the Rio Grande Valley 65 tomorrow and then temperatures kind of spring back a little bit 70 over the weekend cool start very warm Monday Tuesday and right now looking at a big strong front to really pull some cold air in here the latter half of next week. Uh, yes, that's almost an understatement. I mean, it's that's a that's a whopper. As we always talk about, February is one of those squirrely months. I mean, <laughs> you know, goes from heat to cold in the blink of an eye. We look forward to the surprises. Sure, it'll be great. Keeps things interesting. Yeah, right? I, right. I think so. Never a dull moment around here. 649, 60 degrees. And coming up, the pandemic has caused significant changes in the job market, causing many people to invest in a career change. Tomorrow on GMSA, we go over the ways to make sure you can successfully make that change. 
And we pivot to live cam. See how things are looking out there. Hard to see much of a sunrise with all the uh, clouds and humidity in place. We'll circle back and check on traffic with Samuel King coming up. Investigators are hoping a couple of pictures might be worth a thousand leads. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber in Balcones Heights. Actually, all they need is one good lead to help them track down two men in the photos, suspects in the shooting of a police sergeant here. That sergeant and another officer were investigating possible car burglary suspects in the 6900 block of Interstate 10 yesterday when someone started shooting. Sergeant Joey Sepulveda was hit in the neck and shoulder. Late last night, Sheriff Javier Salazar released photos from Sepulveda's body camera. He says the man in the back seat of the car was the shooter, while the other was his getaway driver. Salazar says they've identified both of them by name. Those two men, he says, are related, but he released only their initials, though. He says the 27-year-old shooting suspect has the initials WM, while the 30-year-old driver's initials are SM. And again, he's asking for anyone who might know where they are to get in contact with the sheriff's office. Reporting from Balcones Heights, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. If you're planning to watch SA Live today, the show is guaranteed to be all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Jen Tobias Strusky chats with Academy Award winner Matthew McConaughey in an exclusive interview here in San Antonio. The Texas native shares more on his New York Times best-selling book, Green Lights, and reminisces about his visits here to the Alamo City. He also dishes a story behind one of his most memorable lines. This is the first three words I said in film in 1992, on a, on, on, improvised on the first day on a job that, hell, I didn't know if that was going to be like a one-off like, I would be a, a lawyer right now going, oh, I remember back in 92, that was really fun. I got that little acting gig in that film called Days of Fuse, my one and only time I ever got to do it. Well, it turned out to be much more than a hobby. And yes, the movie that started it all for McConaughey, Dazed and Confused. His book is full of Texas stories, and Jen shares more from the interview today at 1 p.m. on SA Live. So I think he's saying that everything's turned out all right. He Oh, all right, all right, all right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> T-shirts and everything that. now. Let's check it out. Let's see uh, traffic. Everything okay over there, Samuel? Yeah, it's still, uh, we only have one real trouble spot, and this is uh, 410 at I-10 East, uh, that on-ramp, and here's a look at that on Transguide. You can see in the distance there, that's starting to uh, clam up there, or uh, a crowd up there. Our travel time's looking good all around, Mike. We've got a little bit of fog around the area right now. A lot of low clouds visibility, uh, two miles at Pleasanton. Now starting to show up uh, some fog out there at the airport and off to the West Rizzo Springs, Rock Springs. A lot of fog. We are still at 60 and we're going to be seeing a high temperature today up to 80. Then the front's going to move through about dinner time. Wow, 80. Yeah. Be prepared. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. See you back here at 9.